of the biomedical engineering, uh, biomimetics uh, topics in the electrical engineering, computing science, and automatic control conference, CCE 2022. Uh, please remind the audience in the room uh, to, to put a smartphone in silence mode and remote participants to, uh, to disable uh, microphones. Later, they can uh, be able uh, in the question and answer sections if, if you want to, to do a, a query. Uh, remember, you can show all the Congress sessions uh, on the YouTube website. Uh, well, uh, my name is Luis Garcia Espinosa, PhD in electrical electric engineering from Simba staff, professor in CIME IPN, a member of the Laboratorio de Fisiología Oral, División de Estudios de Postgrado e Investigación, Facultad de Odontología, UNAM. So yesterday, I didn't know mention my membership in the UNAM to, to save time, but, but I think it's important to uh, not, not to do so. Uh, well, uh, uh, other news. Tomorrow, uh, Dr. Fernando Perez Escamirosa will be the session chair of this session. Uh, now he is a researcher in the Instituto de Tecnologías Aplicadas y Tecnología in UNAM. I appreciate your participation as the session shared tomorrow. Uh, well, I introduce uh, of the speaker. Uh, the speaker is Roberto Morales Caporal. Uh, is it the right, Roberto? Are you there, Roberto? Hello? Is Rafael? Ah, okay. Rafael, Rafael Vallera. Okay. Uh, Rafael Vallera is the first uh, speaker. Well, uh, ah, okay. I, yes, Rafael. Rafael? Let, let, let me check. Uh, Rafael. Um, check. All right. Rafael Vallera Macias from Centro de Investigación y de Estudios Avanzados del Instituto Politécnico Nacional, México. Uh, mm, uh, uh, are you ready, Roberto? Sorry, Rafael. Are you ready, Rafael? Yes, I'm ready. Well, Rafael, perform your presentation in 15 minutes, maximum, please. Uh, we will notify you when you remind two minutes, uh, say in two minutes. At the final of your presentation, you will be, uh, dedicate uh, five minutes to questions and answers. Okay, you can start. Thanks. Greetings, I appreciate Rafael. taking your time to assist in this room. I'm the friend. My name is Rafael Valle Mancilla, and I will be presenting our uh, most recent paper in this consideration for segmentation based on radiometric data processing towards the research of quantitative medical turnover. As a context, I would like to introduce that medical turnover is the image has raised. Is the story from the quantity? Is well, I think uh, the sound is not good. 
problems in numerical study. Oh, yeah. Users, so a color mapped image. Okay. Yeah. I guess there is a delay. Yes, yes, there is. Um, okay, I perfect. So the problem is that we have a color map image in which, of course, for human eye, for the physiology, it is attractive yeah. to understand the distribution of thermal differences. However, for perform post processing methods, it's important to retrieve a gray scale image. The problem is that the temperature distribution on this kind of gas may uh, remain aesthetically homogeneously around the realm of interest in which, in this case, is the height. So as a feedback from our research, we have exploited the radiometric data, I mean, the signals provided by directly by the infrared sensor for perform, for example, segmentation methods based on thresholding. And also we could spot certain locations for the warmest point on the geometric information. So our hypothesis as context as context is we know that our at least our segmentation algorithm is working based on threshold. That is a fact. However, it still remains two questions. First, if our if our algorithm would work also with five color images, at least with gray scale, or, or performing a transformation into gray scale, and also what would be the accuracy of using radiometric data directly from the sensor respect to a raw image retrieved from the thermal camera? So let me introduce the basics of our method. We use a Decton 2.5 long wave infrared uh, sensor in which here are the technical characteristics. Of course, we are aware that this sensor is not for industrial purposes, but at least performs well the task. It's important to recall that this sensor uh, has, has, has an output of 14 bit data elements in which previously we characterized to obtain a, a temperature matrix so we could uh, perform a post processing as a signal. Uh, here I present in the next slide our samples, which of course I call images signals because at least we are speaking with signals, but I presented of course as images for the audience, for human eyes that could be perceived what are we talking about. So as uh, we can see, we have two types of samples. We took uh, images or, or data, radiometric data for, for the hand on the controlled environment with a purpose to perform, to, to know what, how robust is our method and for fit in a semi-uncontrolled environment for diabetic uh, patients with, uh, without background of diabetic food. And some of them also were uh, uh, near to prone ulcers on the sole of the foot. This is like very important. I consider this is the core of our research because for the ear sensors, uh, through the serial link, we can obtain the radiometric data. With the radiometric data and the unit of the image converter, we can display what the, the, the lecture, the measurements of the sensor and retrieve it as an image. Then this image usually is transformed in the gray domain to perform a digital image processing, which is treated as a signal, and then at least is again uh, reconstructed finally as an image. So our goal in this research is to, to save all these steps, I mean like kind of a shortcut in which we can only use radiometric data Use it treat or treat it as a signal in all the whole process and only at the end retrieve it as a as a image perfectly segmented or also with warmest point located. Finally, our methods here I present our pseudo code in which in the input we have a collection of images and an array of matrices, and the output we would have a well, very well segmented image. So we start to extract a single image from our array. And in, in this case, if we provide as an input a gray scale, a raw gray scale image, we will we have to transform it into a gray scale. Or also, if it's a false color image, this RGB triplet should be also transformed into gray scale domain. Then we set our threshold that we found 0.64 images or 0.8 for radiometric data. I mean, as a matrix. Then we perform, of course, a data normalization from zero to one. We detect the region of interest based on thresholding, and also we eliminate interferences uh, based on four connected radial pixels. And then finally, we display in jet color map, which is this color map from red to blue, being red the warmest spots and blue for the coldest spots. 
Also, we perform a, a validation to just to know how is uh, how far is our accuracy. These uh, methods are known as blind validation, the battalion distance and the official criteria. We call a uh, blind validation because there is not a standard to know how well it is performing our segmentation. And also because we don't have a data base in which we can compare, like a call design, what is the correct perform, uh, what is the correct uh, segmentation of the images. And that's the point of our research. We want to avoid handing segmentation by an expert because sometimes you have a database of more than 100 images, which is also a tedious and hardworking task for, for humans to segment at least 100 images. It's a lot of time. So the idea is to let the computer per, uh, perform these segmentations, and then we will uh, we will compute the, the likelihood of validation in which for battalion distance and also fissure criteria, which we can observe in the equation, fissure criteria is part of the battalion distance, is that the number of the coefficient we obtain, the farther we go from the zero, the better is the likelihood, in which we will compare the original image versus the segmented image to know or to compute the likelihood between both of some. So here I, pre I present the first results. We can observe a priori that it's not the same to retrieve a grayscale image uh, from a raw way of, of the thermal imager than retrieve a color image and then perform a grayscale uh, image. We can see that our algorithm for segmentation is clearly uh, has a clearly failed the task. There are some interferences or formatting is not correctly. Uh, if we only radiometric data, we can see clearly in our histograms how it very well separated the region of interest in this case, food or hand, in which uh, usually the the region of interest has a, has a have values greater than 0 0.8, and 0 0.6 we found for a grayscale image as an as input, priori to uh, perform a, a a second transformation. So. Lastly, I present the results for Patachara distance. We that for radiometric and gray, it's raw gray scale images, the, the performance is very similar versus the false color in which we have a low performance. The values are near to zero, which is very clearly visually how the how our algorithm failed using color mapped images. And for the Fisher criteria, we have exactly the same situation. So discussion, what's next? So the results we can see are very similar if we use radiometric uh, information for a, for a gray scale image. And of course, nat naturally we will ask, so what's the difference? We can see that for radiometric data, it is slightly better, uh, have a slightly better performance because the, the, for the nature of the data. Remember that the, the sensor retrieve a 14 bit resolution values instead of a great scale image, we have eight big values, I mean, 255 different values. So that's the reason that using uh, radiometric information has a better performance than using a great scale image. We have to consider that uh, the segments, in fact, only for foot or uh, hand, I mean, in a specific foot, not work, for example, for. Uh, Um, a breast in or cancer. In, the, in, in infrared thermography, the background usually is controlled or has a, a, a colder values. A better performance information as if our sensor or our camera from the sensor 
it will be better than retrieving an image as data input for a post process. Or post process. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rafael. Uh, there is problem uh, with the audio signal. Uh, uh, it's not good uh, the quality of the, of the sound. I hope uh, you can do something that uh, improves the, this the sound signal, please. Well, uh, Rafael, uh, uh, are there uh, questions? No question. Okay. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, oops. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Doctor, uh, este, lo escucho, nada más déjeme ver si tienen un problema otra vez en la sala, perdón. Ok.
Yo le pregunté, si no le digo si es así la conecta. Hello. Well, hello. Uh, can you hear me? The internet was very slow and um, we, we lost the connection. Oh, so, okay. Well, here we have again. We are again. We can continue. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you hear me, Rafael? Uh, oh. He, he had to go. Okay. But, uh, uh, the, I, I, there I, I, were I, one question here in the room, and that's it. Okay. Uh, well, the next speaker is. Okay. Let's continue with the next speaker. Uh, next speaker, uh, Hugo Gamboa. Uh, uh, Hugo Gamboa, Salvador. Hugo yeah. Salvador Gamboa, excuse me, uh, from from Centro de Investigación y de Estudios Avanzados del Instituto Politécnico Nacional de México. Uh, you can begin your presentation. Please, Hugo. Dispositivo de pasivo continuo. Mi presentación va a okay, ser en español. Can... Mi presentación va a ser en español. Oh, um, uh, presentation uh, need to be in, in English. I I think must be in English. Uh, Hugo. So let's uh, try. <laughs> yes. La presentación que tengo preparada es en español, pero la presentación está en inglés. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, the commit. Uh, it's on a patent. Okay. Yeah. Va a ser lo más abstracto que se pueda por el contenido que tiene. Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, what uh, does the uh, organization commit say about that? You will try to speak in English in your presentation? No, la voy a presentar en español nada más. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's important to speak in English, but uh, I don't know the, the rules uh, about, about these situations. Uh, if you oh. permit to, to speak in Spanish or no. Doctor, please wait a minute. Uh, sorry, I can hear uh, uh, good. Can you repeat? I will ask to Dr. Silva, please. Yes. One minute, please. Okay. You have to ask to uh, Dr. Silva. Esta es mi segunda patente. Esta es mi segunda patente, la primera patente también en AAA, en español. Uh, well, we, we have to, to know the, the rules uh, about this. Uh, uh, I think. I'm waiting English. for the answer of the Dr. Okay. Silva. You can try uh, to decide see if you if, if we if I permit the presentation in Spanish instead in English. 
Dr. Luis, Dr. Silva yes. is in the room. Yes. Uh, hello, Dr. Silva. Yeah. What yeah, do I have yeah. to do in these situations? Uh, the, the, the speaker uh, want to to press uh, to speak in Spanish instead of English. It's not permitted because the language, the, the, the official language is English, and, and there are there are people connected in other countries. So respect the the I to play politics or rules. Uh, we must uh, try to speak or read in English. Okay. Well, uh, you can read a little. You will not understand and try a little. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Silva. Uh, Hugo, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, you can present, uh, speak in, in, in you can pr uh, uh, perform your presentation. Uh, 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 you need to, to read your presentation in English. Uh, uh, and that's all. Are you, uh, do you have uh, any problem about, uh, for that? Okay, so uh, please, I, uh, uh, please read your presentation in English. Hello, Hugo. Are you, can you hear me? Hello, Hugo. Un momento más. Okay. Wait, excuse me. Hi, everyone. We're going to see a system to help to person who has the the uh, illness in the voice on the forearm. For your arm, yes. Okay. What kind of fitness? For example, uh, these people have a, a limitation, a movement limitation of this part, and this, uh, the hand, the is common. It is uh, has this this way, like this photograph. Okay. Specifically, what movements uh, has uh, limitation? The supination, neutral, and um, uh, rotation movements. What is the objective? The objective is to support them when an intelligent device and to, to patients with this kind of illness. We employed an Arduino, uh, auto drivers, and stupid motors. The simple is a very, uh, is a very mechanical device. The, uh, it consists uh, of a control module. This unit is put in the hand. Uh, this is the mechanical part. It, this is in this box. Uh, this is the the electronic device. For example, this one and this one. And we have also the motors. Uh, this is the, the photograph of the device. This is the movement that this system allowed the, the patient to, to do because the patient cannot move the hands. This movement and this movement, and the hand is closed. Okay. 
Okay. What is this? This is a application, a cellular application to move or to connect with the, this module. With the Bluetooth module to communication from the device, the cellular phone. Okay, here we can see uh, the cellular device with the app, uh, the mechanical parts, and this is the uh, our systems uh, with the passive. This is a, a emotion. This emotion of this device refers the movement of both hands. What is the purpose of this system? Is to sense or to record the movement of, of the hand. And we, our objective is to record the angles, the movement angles. For example, For example, this one. Okay, uh, we can see uh, the the user the uh, the lead motion the user and the register of the uh, movement of the button. The lead motion record, uh, movement records of the passing. Es un video. Den otro clip para que se vea el video de cómo está el movimiento de la, de la extremidad. Viendo los ángulos y todo. Y la rehabilitación que se está dando. The lead motion is a commercial device and it has the, uh, the potential to record in real time the, the movements. This is in the Eastern. Okay. Okay. Video. Oh. Este de la ROM. The patient has a limitation of his, his heart, his left heart. Uh, we can see. <laughs> Uh, trying to move this this member. They are the uh, haciendo un capi que ya no tiene el dispositivo de pen. She is a physician. Libros. 
ahí se ven el avance de la ROM. With this device, uh, to, to the revelation of the patients, to do this kind of movement. La futuro se cambia el video, la futuro se lo okay. ve, se piensa ya meter en los pulls. En este momento we have a, a, the Oculus device. It will, it will be to head to the patient to view his hands or his movement hands in order to accelerate the, the rehabilitation process. a las tablets y eso en pelo y el muelle de de physicians has two kind of tools for example es the skull full major and the another one is what is the name what is the nombre de la otra Jefferson Taylor ah okay y esos esos ejercicios de la baraja del también la verdad que hacerle una pila de, de objetos, ya se quiere hacer con el óculos a okay. futuro. What is the purpose of these kind of tools? Uh, is to register and assure objectively the, the record of the rehabilitation according to time. In another word, Is a uh, is a way of uh, objectively uh, record the the, the rehabilitation. It's not subjectively. Está el agradecimiento. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, are are there uh, questions in the room? No. Okay. One question. Okay. Uh, but the device provides okay. some kind of uh, resistance to the motion of the user, or it uh, moves the hand of the user. Yes, it's the second option. The system helps to to the movement because the patient he has to do this kind of movement. Principal this one. This one, this. Okay, thank you. What is the main reason that you use a mirror and not a normal port? Because it's simple, cheaper, small, and more. It could be another one. We have no, no exclusively use this one. It's only a tool to, to solution. It's okay. Thank you for the question and answer. Uh, other question? No, I have a question. So, uh, maybe abstract question. Well, uh, what was the more significant challenge to face in this project? Okay, principally, uh, at, at develop a tools, okay, affordable and and simple that the patient could be. Uh, used in the house, it not okay. only in the hospital. For example, in this case, in the East, in the East, they, they have a, a system 
this is very big. Uh, it's not uh, portable. And this system or our proposed is affordable. It is able to take to the house to to do the to do the rehabilitation task. Okay. Okay. Other question in the room? Well, uh, uh, let's continue to the following presentation. Thank you to uh, uh, the participants. Thank you, Hugo. Uh, I appreciate in the future try to improve your uh, abilities in communication in English. Uh, um, well, uh, I, I would like uh, yeah, to, to give a round of applause to the speakers. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let's go with the next pre presentation. Uh, the next speaker uh, is Matias Alvarado. Is it no. right? Hi, Moises. Okay. It's Moises. Moises. Ah, Moises. Thank you for, for the correction. Okay. And the next speaker is Moises Leon. Uh, you can uh, start uh, your presentation when you uh, ready. Do you need some time to prepare to oh, it's okay. presentation? It's okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. Okay. My, uh, thank you very much, uh, Luis. My name is Moses Leon. I'm from the computer department from the study Pens Akatenko. And I'm going to present you the paper that is entitled Genetic Network on Breast Cancer Metastasis in Lip Notes, Information Theory, Algorithms. Uh, I did this research work in collaboration with Dr. Matias Alvarado, the engineer in Bama de Spin, and Dr. Sector Cara. Well, the order of the presentation will be the next one. First, I'm going to talk about the problem statement or the motivation that we use uh, well, for this uh, research work, the methods that we use to obtain and analyze the, the results, it's analyzed, and the discussion and conclusion of the research work. Well, cancer is a very difficult health challenge in all the world. Only in Mexico in 2020, INEGI reports more than 1 million of deaths associated with cancer. And the metastasis is the principal or the main what for from death uh, from deaths associated with cancer. Why? Because it's very difficult, very difficult to bone and inhibit. And for that reason, we want to make uh, to generate a genetic network from biopsies of these tissues to identify the mean genes that are associated in the in the formation of the cancer. The methodology that we use is the next one. First, we obtain and normalize the databases. We use an algorithm named Aragne in its multicore version to obtain the correlation matrix. After that, we bring the correlation matrix for a very handy. And finally, we obtain the relevant information during the analysis of the genetic network that we make. The databases are uh, from GEO, that is the Gene Expression Omnibus, from the National Center for the Biotechnology Information. GEO is a public and functional genomics repository that contains information about biopsies data, clinical experiments, and curate gene expression profiles. We obtain an array sequence and the, specifically the database that we use is the GSC. 32489 that contains information about breast cancer, metastasis of the lymph nodes, and autopsy tissues. In this data set, 
uh, contains 120 samples, but for the, but for that only 90 are useful for this this work. Well, we have to prune the this information because in the original data set we contain more than 20 features. And these features or this information are information that we don't need. We decide to make a dictionary, and this dictionary would be proposed that in the future we can get information of another databases, and we we want to get up to date the normalized information of all that data sets. So we get the ID, which is the identification of the genes. The symbol, this symbol is a gene symbol or the gene, uh, and gene, a general name from these genes, and it's synonyms. Also, we identify only the genes that call for proteins. And finally, to introduce the information in Aragna, we use the symbol and the p value. This p value is a normalized information that are the transcripts permitted in the macroarray uh, expressions. ARACNET is an acronym from the algorithm for the reconstruction of accurate cellular networks. It uses information, uh, information theory approach to identify the principal genes in the network. Uh, it, it eliminates most of the direct interactions in favorable expression methods and uses the microarray expression profile to scale up the complexity of the, ne uh, the regulatory node networks, but also is a node general to address a wider range of network deconvolution problems. Uh, Aragne used the term from entropy, but it's not a typical uh, term from thermodynamics, that is the weights of the work that are not useful. In this case, entropy is a, quant a quantification of information from discrete uh, characterization from the probability or every, uh, every symbol. Formally, it's expression in this uh, equation in which pi of t is the probability of each state in the system, k is the, the Boltzmann constant, and eight are the states. In this case, these states are the genes in the right. And uh, use the entropy to estimate the mutual information. This mutual information are going to be the whole expression or the mutual information between the variables X and Y, that in this case are the genes. To obtain the mutual information, we use uh, the entropy from X plus the entropy of G minus the entropy of the both variables. Uh, well, we obtain the expression profile, as I mentioned, from the, from the biopsis to generate the expression matrix from Agnet. The mutual information is sorted in two, in two ways, a sort file and a zip files. I will uh, explain this, these files in another slide, but it's, in, it's very important to mention that after obtaining this uh, mutual information ordering, we make a second prompt of this information to obtain, because the original uh, files have more than 10 gigabytes of information, and with a second, with a second Proof of this information, we apply a threshold to identify uh, the most important uh, correlation between pair genes of uh, the pair of genes, and uh, we obtain weighted genetic networks. These weighted genetic networks allow us to identify the degree distribution of the network, the, the topology, and the centralities of this network. La, for the first re results. We obtain a genetic network uh, uh, generated by this data set. We can see in the image, and the first result that we obtain is that there is a non connect network. Uh, this, that means that they are not Iceland, so all the genes are connected, at least with another one. The centralities and the topology of their network are the next one. The average degree uh, means the average. Of the, of the number of connect, the average of the number of connections that uh, uh, the genes have, the clustering coefficient, the average shortest path length, uh, this this centrality or this uh, can give us information if we compare with the logarithm of the total number of genes in the network or, or nodes in the network. 
In this case, the logarithm of the number of the genes are higher than the average shortest path length. So uh, that indicates that we have a small world network. This means that uh, the most of the genes are not neighborhood, but we need um, a small number of hops to get from one gene to another gene. In this histogram, we can see the degree distribution from the genetic network that we, we that we generate, and in this case, are following a low, a low, a power law distribution. Or, uh, that means that we have a scale-free network or a power law network. That means that uh, most of the genes in the network have a few number of connections, and uh, a little part of this genes have a lot of connections. The, this because the second prompt that we have uh, we we do the, because it's a scale free network that uh, doesn't import and don't affect the distribution of the network. And continue with the analysis of the relevant genes that we obtain from the from the generate the genetic network generation. We obtain, as I mentioned, two types of two files that are the mutual information ordering. The first is a point, a point soft file, and or this ordering the mutual information by the higher correlation between gene pairs that we can see in the table one. And in the the second files are the are the a point shift file that is ordering the mutual information by the major correlation of each gene in of each gene node. Continue with this analysis, we can focus on the first element of type of high correlation and give us the first element of the major correlation with the fourth uh, element of the major correlation. LHFPL3 is a gene that forms parts of the transmembrane, transmembrane protein that uh, allows the pass between the membrane in the body. And the second one is a, a chromosome G uh, open that this means that this uh, portion of DNA that doesn't have a, an stopped codon. In, as we know, in the cellular, uh, the cancer cells are cells that have a mutation. And one of these mutations is that uh, these cells can, can die. So this, this, uh, this gene said us that most of the, the genes that are in the genetic network have a relation with this gene. Continue with this analysis, we can focus now in the second element of the table of higher correlation. We obtain the fifth uh, uh, element of the table with major connections with the third element of the of this table. The first one, uh, when this this gene have a mutation is associated with congenital disorders in human, and one of these congenital disorders in human, when is this gene is enhancing, is an acceleration in the metabolization of the DNA, and this may have a, a role in the oncogenesis. And the oncogenesis is the is, is a way or describes when the cancer is grading, and the another one, SAL3, uh, when it's uh, uh, have mutations, these genes lead to several disorders, including uh, some disorders in the in the blood, in the and the most important or, or the the disorder that take our attention is the renal amyloid disease. This amyloid uh, its relation with the bone marrow and can be located in different organs. So this information can say us that uh, there is a metastasis present because these genes. For the discussion, we can uh, say that the, with information theory algorithms, uh, we can generate genetic networks and do its analysis. The distribution of probabilities of each node can give us information about the importance of each, each gene and the topology also can give us information about the genetic network. 
In conclusion, we can say that preliminary, we can identify uh, the new genes that are uh, associated in the genetic network. Each node uh, can uh, sell us uh, information or could indicate us the relevance in the, in the genetic network. And if, if, if the node or if the gene has uh, some relevance with cancer, and the gene pairs, as we can see, uh, the highest correlation match with the genes that have the highest connections. So uh, this is these are information that are relevant, relevant for us because we can say that uh, that are genes that are uh, having a role in the cancer or the pro in the production of the cancer or in the metastasis. For future works, we can analyze different type of tissues and compare the genetic networks that we, that are, they are generated. We can take healthy tissues, uh, tissues with a primary cancer tumor, and like, like in this case, uh, tissues from the first metastasis in the organs distance to the primary tumor. Remembering that we take in this case uh, uh, the database which has the metastasis in deep nodes with a primary tumor in breast. Also, we can we could uh, make a neural network that can identify the main genes in the process of cancer formation with the information that we obtain from the genetic networks. And for to finish this presentation, we can do the next uh, question research question that is this identification via preliminary step to advance for understanding the pre-metastatic niche formation. This pre-metastatic niche formation is very important because it describes uh, the microenvironment when the cancer is formation. So this is the first uh, uh, research work that we are doing for a large investigation to identify this pre-metastatic niche formation. So that's uh, for, for reference. And Thank you very much. I don't know if somebody has questions, some comments or suggestions. Thank you, Moises. Uh, <laughs> any question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah? okay. Uh, why do you do the pruning of the tarot? Well, uh, that's a, a very good uh, uh, question. Thank you. Uh, well, we do the prune first because we have, uh, like as I mentioned, uh, files, very big files, uh, more, uh, more or less 10 gigabytes in the in the first files of the output from Aragno. So this is the first prune to obtain the, the relevant genes that we have. The second prune that we have uh, was relation with the highest correlation because we can see that there is a lot, a lot of, of genes that have uh, many connections, but then the correlation between pairs they are low. So we decide to obtain only the genes, the gene pairs that have a higher correlation to get the main information. Okay, thanks. Another question? Other question? <laughs> I have a question, uh, yes. Moises. Uh, well, uh, why uh, did you select uh, the the algorithm uh, uh, to detect correlation between can cans? Uh, I I would, I would like to to know uh, what is the uh, how do you uh, do the decisions of to use this uh, tool, mathematical tool. Right. Yes. Well, we we decided to use Aragne because in our teamwork uh, there was a suggested uh, because there is a an algorithm that is very uh, robust. As I say, uh, we can scale the the complexity of the the in here, uh, sorry, we can uh, scale the the algorithm because it's very. We can do uh, very general problems like the the convolution problems, and also we can uh, use to scale up the complexity of the regulator, regulatory not networks. So for that reason, we use Aragne. Also, uh, well, Aragne is uh, 
have very implementation in very types of um, language or, or coding. In this case, we decide to apply the multicore, uh, uh, the multicore aragne that was the last one of the authors, uh, Carl So that's the, the main reason that we use aragne. Okay, thank you, Moises. Other question? There's another question? Well, um, thank you again, Moises. Let's give a round of applause to speaker Moises. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's go uh, with the next uh, speaker. Next speaker is Carlos Andres Cortez. Are you there, Carlos? Yes, I am here. Okay, are you ready? Um, just one moment, please. Okay. I think I think I'm ready. Thanks. Well, uh, thank you everyone for coming here. And I will start with a brief uh, introduction to immersive virtual environments and the complexity to uh, design systems to interact with these kind of environments. Then I will talk to you about underactive mechanics of skeletons and why we can use these uh, systems as haptic interfaces. I will present you our system proposal, its integration, the design, experimental design results, and I will finish with a brief conclusion. Let's begin. Uh, well, in the real world, a human can interact with this uh, and perceive its environment through its senses. Just uh, the human can see, can touch, uh, can manipulate and feel things in the world. Now, if we want to replace this world with a virtual one, a computerized one, we have to find a way to provide this kind of stimuli to the human. And this is done with uh, specialized interfaces, just as the head-mounted display, as you can see, this one, the head-mounted display, as you can see here in the figure, or the haptic interfaces to provide a, a force a feedback to the user. Now, as the human interacts with the world mostly through his hands, the most uh, studied haptic interfaces are for hands. And there are three types of haptic interfaces, the inertial ones, the mobile ones, and the wearable ones. We will be focusing on the wearable ones. Now, a haptic hand, exos a, a hand exoskeleton can be used as a haptic interface uh, because this is a wearable device that uh, can be worn on the hand of the user and can provide a force feedback to the fingers of the user. Now, in order to achieve it, we have to fulfill three main design objectives. The wearability, because the human will be wearing the device, the uh, full region of, range of motion or range of motion. Uh, this means that the device has not to block the motions of the fingers of the user. And we have to provide at least uh, a significant stimuli to uh, discriminate the contacts on the, uh, on the virtual environment. Now, because the limitation of the technology uh, that we have, we have to face three main design problems. The first one is that due to the uh, biomechanical complexity of the hand, 
there is very difficult to design a kinematic structure that provides force to every joint of the finger and that does, does not block the movement of the finger. The second one is that we have a trade-off between the size and the torque uh, or force that the actuators can provide to the human user. And the third one is that we need high-end integration to provide the haptic feedback uh, synchronized with the visual feedback to generate a sense of immersion to the user. Now, an alternative approach to increase the wearability of these devices is the underactuation. An underactuated device is one with less actuators than degrees of freedom. Uh, because of this, it will have a more drivable structure and then increasing the wearability of this uh, exoskeleton. As a downward, it will have uh, an, a smaller force space. So it will uh, be not able to display the force, uh, the full force calculated on the virtual environment, but as the human can uh, move his hand and then reposition the base of the exoskeleton, he will be able to perceive the most of the force when interacted with, with virtual objects. Now, uh, currently, several devices have been developed in order to be used as a haptic interface, just as the Wi-Fi to interact with large virtual environments, the Exotrack MX, which proposed a cyber physical approach to study this kind of devices, and we have the, that provides a haptic feedback to three fingers to perform a grasping and manipulation tasks. Now, this is our proposal. We have here a human and the virtual environment. Inside the virtual environment, we'll be running a force model and the forward kinematic of the exoskeleton. The virtual environment and the human will interact through two channels. The first one, the visual one, uh, using a head-mounted display, in this case, an Oculus Quest 2. And the second one, the, uh, the haptic one, using our haptic device, which is a haptic and articulated hand exoskeleton conformed by two kinematic chains in order to allow the user to interact more naturally okay grasping and manipulating objects inside the virtual environment and its control unit based on the nuclear F767 CDI uh, embedded system. Now here in the figure, you can see a user wearing the full system, the head mounted display, the exoskeleton with the two kinematic chains and the onboard control unit. Here we have two important remarks. The first one is that the kinematic chains have two attachment points uh, per finger. So it is attached just to the dorsal and the fingertip of the human. Uh, this design enables the full rump uh, of the fingers. So there is no uh, obstruction in the movement. And the second one is that the portable control unit is running two threads. The uh, first one is the haptic thread, which communicates with the virtual environment. And the second one is the motor control thread, which uh, ensures that the third uh, requested by the virtual environment is exerted on the exoskeleton. Now here you, in figure four and five, you can see uh, the exoskeleton mounted over the hand and the two kinematic chains, one for the index finger and one for the thumb finger. As we want to track the movement of the human hand and send it to the virtual environment, we included six encoders, one per, per each uh, joint of the kinematic chain. And for the, uh, the haptic feedback, we included two Hagen uh, micro motors. Uh, these are enough to provide some haptic cues to both fingers in all the room. Now, uh, as we want uh, to explore the wearability of the exoskeleton, we want to let the human to move freely inside the virtual environment. So we have to track the position of the hand of the user. For this, we make a transformation from the origin on the virtual environment to the head of the user, the position of the head mounted display. And from there, we track the position of the dorsal of the hand with the controller of the head mounted display. At last, we make the homogeneous transformation from the base of the exoskeleton 
to the fingertip of, of the human of what each one of the fingers uh, using the forward kinematic of the exoskeleton. Now, uh, in regard to dynamics, we consider that due to the small size of the exoskeleton relatively and the light weakness of it, in conjunction with the high uh, force exerted by a human to compensate the fact that he, he has an exoskeleton over his hand, we can neglect the non-inertial forces uh, provided by the exoskeleton. So we can study it as an inertial system. You can see here the equation one. Uh, the import, important part here are uh, the left side of the equation. We have there two torques, a robot torque and a human torque. This is a cyber-physical control. The first uh, component of this cyber-physical control is the robot torque and is related with the haptic stimuli that can be provided by just one motor. Now, the kinematic structure uh, could not uh, control its position or the force with just one motor, but in fact, when it is attached to the human, uh, the human can control it and move and decide to change its position as he will, or he wish. So the human introduces a human control, which is uh, the propagation of the force exerted to the symbol of the kinematic chain. Um, let's begin. Now, in regard to the virtual immersive virtual environment, it was made in Unity and has virtual objects just like the blue cube in the figure number eight. This cube or virtual object has an associated force model. This is an elastic force model. And for evaluation, the grasping and the manipulation of the object, we consider just geometrically conditions. So, we measure the distance between the pointers, the uh, fingertips of the user inside the virtual environment with the center of mass and the angle between the contact points. So with this, we are considering the force exerted over the object and the configuration of the grasp. We conduct three experiments to uh, validate the system as a haptic interface and to show how this uh, cyber physical control works. So in the first experiment uh, is a reaching task without haptics. The user has to move his fingers uh, to reach three spheres per finger in the finger workspace. And uh, he receives no haptic uh, feedback. Then in the experiment number two, it is a grass and manipulation task with haptics inside the finger workspace. So the user keeps his hand steady and has to close the fingers and move the virtual object, as you can see here in figure 11. Uh, here in, the, in figure 12, you can see both the penetration on the object, the uh, haptic force calculated, and the control of uh, the current of the motor, which uh, delivers the haptic stimuli to the uh, finger by propagating this torque to the uh, Jacobian of the kinematic chain. The last experiment is a grass manipulation with haptics uh, outside the finger's workspace. So to explore the wearability of the exoskeleton, the user have to grab a, a virtual object from one location and to move it, moving his arm to other location far from the finger's workspace. You can see here in figure 15, the initial and final position and the path of the center of mass of the object, as well as the uh, motor control signals here. Now, that's going to talk about the conclusions. We can say that a human controls the exoskeleton fingertip pose uh, by exerting this human torque into the exoskeleton. The second one says that the underactive force feedback provided by the exoskeleton is small, but is enough to discriminate contacts inside the virtual environment. So it can uh, allow the user to know when he is grasping something. The exoskeleton is suitable to be used for grasping and manipulation tasks as shown in experiments two and three. And by last, we, I have to talk about the future work, which includes the optimization of the kinematic chains considering um, the force directions or the manipulability, 
Uh, we want to program uh, dynamic objects inside the virtual environment so we can uh, deal with objects with inertia inside the environment. We propose to do an in-depth study of the cyber physical control, including uh, four sensors to the exoskeleton to know or well, to measure and then to know the force exerted by the user to the kinematic chain. And by last, do the psychophysical study to know uh, how well this uh, exoskeleton performs on delivering a sense of immersion in the virtual environment. That's all. Thank you for your attention. I'm ready for your questions. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, are there questions in the room? Anyone? Yeah. In your simulation, can you uh, describe how soft or hard is the object or if it's a uh, particular work? Uh, yeah, I can change the, the object's thickness. <laughs> yes, uh, and it's, well, it's not a simulation per se, it's, it's experimental work. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah just clarifying that. Uh, well, uh, we haven't performed experiments with different stiffness for for this paper, but it is possible, and we test the capability of the system. Yeah. Uh, anyone? Thank, thank you for the uh, question. Uh, other question? No. I have two questions uh, to okay. you, uh, for, for you, um, Carlos. The first one, uh, I find uh, very interesting uh, 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 the, the job that, that, that you uh, did. Uh, so, I'm curious uh, uh, about the use of electric stimulation uh, of muscles related with fingers to offer the, per the contact perceptions and mechanics eff uh, efforts. So the question is, uh, have you found, uh, found uh, the use of the uh, electric stimulation or the use of the electric stimulations to offer virtual uh, contact perception? Uh, I have not uh, checked that word yet. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not familiar with that uh, kind yeah. of uh, feedback. Uh, the next uh, the question. Wait a minute. Some change. Uh, oh yeah okay only one question sorry uh, yeah, thank you thank you thank you <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you doctor thank you anyone sir. anyone no well thank you carlos thank you for uh, again uh, uh, let's uh, give a, uh, a round of applause uh, uh, to, to the speaker, Carlos. And go uh, with the next speaker. Uh, next speaker is Frank Martinez Suarez from Centro de Investigación y de Estudios Avanzados. Del Instituto Politécnico Nacional. Are you ready, Frank? I, yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Please tell me when, when you uh, get ready. Okay.
Uh, hello, uh, my name is Fernando Martinez, and I'm here to present a long term continuous ambulatory SG model with B2 hair rate measurement in real time using ESP32. In this work, we are doing a brief introduction, continue with material methods, result, conclusion, and the end reference. Now, the causes of the ambulatory uh, monitor emerging in the late of 80 or 40, the development by Nofred Jeffrey Holt. The idea, the idea is uh, digitalizing uh, the SG signal for a long period of time, the majority of the, of the case, 20 or, or more. With the evolution of the technology, uh, this technique was perfectly de uh, decreasing the weight, the volume, and increasing the quality of the recording and the duration of the recording. In this work, we are proposed a, a monitor holder that's a system nuclear, uh, an ADS-1294 ESP-72 microcontroller ECD screen, and a micro ECD memory. And for the implement of the framework in the ESP-32, we use Arduino and the specific library for the device. Now, the ADS-1294 is a, a, analog to digital converted a simultaneous sampling with four channels with 20 bit of resolution, with uh, amplification with program, program amplification factor and internal reference. The, uh, this internally included a golden, ne uh, golden Bagger network with a central terminal. In this case, we use only three channels for the lead D1, IBF, and B2. In the case of the USAID memory, uh, we use a uh, Kingston class 10 with a capacity of 32 gigabytes with a real speed of, of 45 megabit by second and reality speed of 10 megabytes by second. But in the device, we can use a memory of capacity for 480, 60, and 32 gigabyte memory if they are class 4 or higher. Now, the, the less display uses is a liquid crystal display variant with film transistor t fitted technology to improve its quality. She displayed diagonal is 1.4 inches and the resolution is 128 for 128 pixels. Then can display 60 full color. This is more important for the integration of the user with the system. Now, the ESP32 uh, microcontrollers is a series of low cost, low power microcontroller used with integrate Wi Fi and Bluetooth. Technology designed for mobile and, inter and internet of the scene application. Now, the ESP32 is a 32 bit um, dual core microprocessor that support 240 megahertz. The ESP has a, a program memory from a ESP ESR RAM about half of megahertz and included an in internal RTC, but in addition, you could. Uh, Connected and standard flash SRAM memory. Now, the device, the, interface, the, interf uh, the visual interface is composed by a screen, the start, error, mind, configuration, memory, data, time passing in data record. The two more important are configuration and the record. In the case of configuration, it used to modify the parameters of the device, like brightness or the sampling frequency. In the case of the record, it used to visualize one of the three lead digitalized, digitalized and the status of the electrodes and the hair rate in real time. Now, this prototype concentrate at the component in one single board, with dimension of person of 62 by 66 millimeters. And the upper side we have the LCD display and the display button, fundamental element for the in uh, user interaction. In the, other, the lower phase of the world, we have the ESP32, the microSD memory, and the ES, IDS 1294 elementor in charge of the acquisition processing storage the SG signal. To connect the device to outside, we have a DV15 connector that's what used for charging the battery, programming the device, and connect the electrode needed for the SG signal, the carry the SG signal. Now, the auto is invented 2022 applica application was used to design the box. This software permits the design of objects in three dimensions with precision and generate the necessary field for 3D printing. 
la combinación of metal insert M2 screw and impeller plastic are used for the construction of, the, of this device. Now, the final ensemble pressure has dimension of 84 by 43 per centimeter and a weight approximately 129 grams. But it, to validate the performance of the, the device, is necessary, necessary to characterize uh, the parameters common with the reactor, mandate with improved rate resolution and the duration of the battery. In the case for, for common model radiation, bandwidth, bandwidth and reso resolution and input rate, we use those specifically for the manufacturer because no additional compra were connected to ADS uh, 1294. In the case of uh, common model radiation, is minus 150. The bandwidth is defined from zero to half the sampling frequency. In this case, this case, we can select between 250, 500, and 1, 2,000 because none of those filters was implemented. The input margin is a minus plus 2.4 volt for unit gain, but in the future we can increase the gain. In the resolution is 286 nanovolt when using a 20, uh, 24 bit of resolution at the input margin of minus plus 2.4. For the theoretical calculation of the maximum duration of the battery, uh, we need to uh, calculate the maximum current consumption of the monitor. In this case, we uh, use the maximum frequency, 1 to 1,000, the LCD screen permanently, permanently on, the electronic screen de electronic detection activate, and the routing and the memory. In this condition, we have a maximum consumption of current of 15 milliamperes at a regular supply voltage of 3.3 volt. In this condition, we have a duration <laughs> Theoretical of 67 or Now, to validate the real life, the real life of the battery, we we realized a new test with charging the battery at 100% until the device was turned off. In this case, this method was repeated five times, and the, reduce, the result was always on time a device performance of approximately 24, uh, 84, or exceeding the minimum of 24. Or con of continuous operation. We have to mention that uh, the real duration of the battery exceeds the theoretical um, life of the battery because no, no, all, not all elements are, are uh, function at the same time. Now, to validate the acquisition of the signal from the open and the second monitor, two tests were performed. In the first, we connect the device to the Metro PS. Uh, for, uh, 420 to validate the gain, the real time error rate detection, and the electronic connectivity detection. The second test is a compar comparison between the monitor and the BioPack MP36. In this test, a simultaneous, simultaneous acquisition of the HC signal was performed with both devices connected at the same electrodes of a, of a test of chips. Now, to compare the signal digitalized, we take the first five minutes of the two recording and synchronize. With that, we doing a correlation of a value of 92%. The two signals I analyzed with the algorithm of the algorithm to detect the error weight peak and compare the tachogram confirming a similarity of 97%. Now, and if Finally, the black and white statistic method was used to evaluate the measure of the error interval in the simultaneous recording and killing by two devices and compare the variability. The graph confirmed that the most of the points are inside the, in the confidence interval proposed by this method. So, now, at the, uh, this device we compared with previous laboratory working and uh, commercial device. When we compare with the previous uh, previous lab, now we're working, we can see that the majority of the characteristics are superior. If we, if we go part with the commercial device, we can see that the characteristics are very similar. In conclusion, we create a prototype that is uh, has the dimension of the characteristics as, some, as the commercial device that can uh, digitalize the three list simultaneous I have a, a, a lightweight with 120 
9 gram compact with dimension 84 by 43 by 79 and with SMR at minus 150. A resolution of 286 nanovolt and input rate uh, plus minus 2.4. Además, oh, sorry. After that, we have a detection component of the statue of electrodes when we do the acquisition. We can uh, select different sampling frequency and we can select different types of memory. A future of all, we are uh, optimize, continue to optimize the design, uh, the energy consume, and we are uh, pro doing proof with uh, send a digital signal and alarm via Bluetooth to a cell phone or a computer. After, after that, we are creating a software to ana analyze with more precision the record uh, obtained of the device. Reference. And thank you for your attention. I cannot hear you. We don't hear you. We don't hear you. Your microphone. Your microphone. Okay. Thank you, Frank. Uh, I forget uh, to get uh, open the uh, yeah, microphone. Uh, uh, are there uh, questions in the room? No. No? Okay. One recommendation, Frank. Uh, I recommend that you measure the, uh, the C CMRR because uh, uh, the environment noise uh, 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 is present in the signal uh, when, when you put the chip in the PCB board. So I recommend uh, that, that make sure that uh, an evidence of that noise uh, is the graph that you sh show. Uh, uh, we are doing uh, proof. Uh, we are doing 100 on decibel on similar or more okay. common range, but is in in the march of the uh, producer of the Texas Instrument. Okay. Is in the range of the Texas Instrument. Okay. Uh... Well, uh, in, in one of the graphs that, that you show uh, in the presentation, uh, I can see uh, some noise, and I suppose that uh, this noise uh, doesn't have to 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 appear. Yeah, that's, the problem that's right. Be, no? That's right. In the, the problem graph is in orange. The, weather, the orange graph. The noise is that we like we use in the same electrode. The two device, they move into this noise, this noise. but it included in this way, we will take a correlation of 92%. Okay. Uh, thank you, Frank. Uh, other question? No? Well, thank you, Frank, again. Uh, let's go with the next uh, uh, speaker. Uh, the next speaker is Oliverio Arellano. Oliverio, are you there? Yes, sir. Here I am. Okay. Do you need some time to prepare your presentation? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Please tell me when you get ready. Okay, good evening for everyone. It is my presentation for this work. Uh, the title is ECE Arrhythmia Classification for Comparing pre trained Deep Learning Models. This is the team that works for this work. And my name is Oliverio Arellano Cárdenas. 
The content of this presentation will be introduction in SCG Arithmia database, uh, pre-trained MATLAB models, proposed methods, results, and some conclusions. Anyway, we start with the introduction. Uh, we, uh, our work was uh, uh, about deep learning. We worked with some models that are, are available in MATLAB environment, the uh, several types of deep uh, networks that are pre-trained. Uh, well, we are going to talk about it um, um, <laughs> later. This deep learning is a subset of machine learning, which in turn is a, a subset of artificial intelligence we work with this deep learning uh, approach that let us uh, to take uh, software that can be training, it can learn for examples, and it uses for uh, topics like uh, speech and image recognition. <coughs> And the, in MATLAB, uh, these models are uh, pretend models uh, because uh, one designer has two strategies that can uh, follow his training from scratch without any previous knowledge or using transfer learning that is uh, the approach that we try uh, use it in this work. Uh, in, when working from scratch, the system or the network has to be trained from <laughs> without any previous knowledge. So, for example, in the case that we want to <laughs> classify some vehicles, cars, trucks, bicycles, we have to <laughs> count with a, a database of images and train the network from, <coughs> for every one of these images. Uh, this is a very time consuming, it uh, needs a <coughs> very high resources equipment. So, um, well, not in all the teams are available this kind of resources or time to and this we can use the transfer learning. And this means that in a laboratory where they have the resources, they train the systems with all of these uh, resources. They may take from days to months to simulate and train all the networks, and then they put available this. Uh, systems for the general public. So we don't uh, take these uh, systems, retrain it, and well, they can be, uh, be trained on a certain class of images, for example, cats and dogs, but where we can use them for um, our specific problem. For example, the classification of vehicles. Then we on, only have to <laughs> change some of the layers of these pre-trained networks, and uh, this reduces our simulation times. Well, uh, in MATLAB, there are <laughs> available 19. Uh, system, retrain systems that we can load uh, and use them. And in our work, we <coughs> use it, uh, them to test with this uh, problem using the database from MIT, <coughs> which uh, is a very known database used in several research workers. Uh, this is a, 
um, database that has um, has well, eighty forty eight uh, channel records uh, from uh, forty seven <laughs> patients. Each patient uh, has two records, uh, two channels, and is digitized at three hundred and sixty samples per second. Uh, well, this is a register that has uh, is the signals, the digital side signals. Uh, these signals are labeled with this kind of uh, symbols, and each symbol represents some conditions for each bit that we have in this database. And for this, uh, the whole database, these are the number of events or that appears for each one of these conditions. Well, the <laughs> MATLAB, as I said before, has 19 retained models, which are represented in this <laughs> graph. For example, the <laughs> size of the circle represents the complexity of the model. And the, it is uh, taken, Alex Mel, for example, as the, the unit, the basis to represent the most uh, quick uh, system. And uh, we have the relative <coughs> prediction time uh, compared with Alex Mel. And the accuracy, uh, right? For me, if we go higher, they are more accurate than AlexNet. This is one of the first networks that was developed. For example, here we have a rock timeline that represents the several networks that have been developed uh, well, in this case. So, so 2018, AlexNet was the reference because was one of the, was the first uh, deep network developed for this kind of, uh, of problem. And here, for example, the, then in 2014, the VGG, yes, and, and they uh, taken the <laughs> network until mobile in this case. And this is the complete list, the 19 uh, models that are uh, available in MATLAB environment. And here we can see the uh, quantity of parameters in millions, the input <laughs> size, the they admit as input for images. The depth refers to the number of convolutional networks that has every one of these, these models. Well, the proposed method we use it, as I said before, the total uh, database of uh, MIT but, uh, well, for training this model we need uh, several or many examples uh, as we saw in, the, in a previous <coughs> slide uh, not all of these uh, kind of, of bits are available uh, in the <coughs> sufficient quantity, so we took some of them. These are seven classes that we used to 
uh, and test our uh, this 19 network. And then <coughs> this is the uh, road form uh, as uh, how they are seen in the database. <coughs> our methodology was first uh, make a pre-processing of the signals that is seen here. The database uh, are digitalized uh, signals. So we have to first uh, choose each one of these bits. These are libel. <laughs> uh, well, we took, took any one of them and then we have to crop to this size and then each bit has to be classified in <laughs> according to the label so we constructed in this way our <coughs> database to train all the, of the <coughs> models <laughs> then we uh, use these models and we, uh, well, in MATLAB, we can change off many of the parameters of these models. So we uh, try to use the same uh, set of parameters for all of them. Uh, well, here are the conditions that we use to make the, the simulation. Some of them uh, have to be a little different because, for example, the last met large, as we saw in the previous slide, is very large and we couldn't run using GPOs. Uh, the, due to our limitation in our hardware. So this one was the only that was run on CPU. All of the uh, rest uh, were using GPUs. Here we uh, show the accuracy for each one of them. For, uh, for every model, we <coughs> made several runs. Uh, in this case, as net large, it took, as we can see, about two days for the simulation. So it was impractical making <coughs> many more simulations because <laughs> the time was a little short. So for several of these models, we you make some things to obtain the roles. In, and for this one, let's last net large and uh, the other that is uh, several uh, uh, complex, we use <coughs> room made only two runs <coughs> because this is a pre. Uh, only a preliminary work to test all of the, the, these models. Well, uh, here we can see the aspect that we see for each one of the models. We can be see the error, how it was decreasing. And here we can see the <laughs> Uh, uh, conforming each the parameters are <coughs> being training, how we can improve the accuracy. This is <laughs> well, this is for GoogleNet and this is for NASNet Lash. And with all of these simulations, we construct these composition matrices with the uh, show how well uh, is performing each model. 
this kind of uh, feed off we uh, were generated for is one of the nineteen models. And with all of this information, we in the field of uh, this table. And as conclusion, well, uh, as we can see, biggest network take the longest training times, but not always <laughs> uh, they achieve the best results because as we see in this table, this is the large, largest network, takes the biggest time, but uh, the accuracy for this one. Sorry, mm, it, two minutes. Yes, <laughs> it's not uh, uh, very less than other of them. Small, small networks show the worst performance, but they have short training times. So, for problems where each <laughs> well, it, it should be necessary in repeating several simulations, we do not require a high performance, and they could be an option. And um, well, all of, all of this work is a preliminary study for comparing these 19 models due to the required time for simulating each network. We did not perform a larger number of runs. And it is significant noticing that all of the networks have higher accuracy. Even the <coughs> worst cases were in the range of 18%. So we conclude that we can use pre trained networks as a good option for uh, when it is important saving time. Okay, I conclude with this. Well, uh, thank you, Oliverio. Uh, are there uh, questions in the group? Yes. Yes. No. No questions. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Here. According to the results, which of the models would be the best? So you saw, so if you were to look in a tool to very Okay, we saw with this, with all of these models, that uh, any of these <coughs> networks could be a good option to predict this kind of arrhythmia. And as you can see, the words in this case is maybe this one which is 19 but even this one is uh, above 80 percent so uh, i if you ask me what um, what i use to from this speaking the phone that you said that some of it then were a uh, uh, time consuming yeah. or training or Resource consuming, talking about the topic. So. <laughs> well, for example, uh, if uh, you ask me what, which one of these was I would do, use, it would be uh, an intermediate, maybe <laughs> this. Uh, this has high uh, performance in section B3 and only 84 minutes for simulation. If you need to make uh, several runs, maybe it could be a little net a good option for speed. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Another question? No? Okay. I don't have questions. Uh, uh, thank you for your presentations. Let's go uh, uh, with the final speaker. The last speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Two. Hi, Luis Antonio. Hi. May I um, share my screen, right? Yes, you can change. Uh, share your screen. Uh, so let me know if Can you see my slides? Slides, yes, uh, I, I think I can. Uh, thank you, GA Vasquez uh, Santa Cruz. Yes. You, you are from Universidad de Veracruzana, Mexico. For UAM. UAM. Thank you, uh, GA Vasquez Sanchez. You can begin oh. with your presentation. Yeah, really, I am Eduardo Vasquez Santa Cruz. Ah, from Eduardo, sorry. sorry. UAM. Excuse me, Eduardo no Vázquez worry. Sánchez. Santa Cruz. <laughs> Eduardo Santa Cruz. Thank you. Eduardo Vázquez Santa Cruz. Eduardo Vázquez Santa Cruz. Sorry, sorry, I, I'm so tired. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> well, don't worry. Let's continue. Eduardo Vázquez Santa Cruz from uh, UVM. Thank you. Uh, you can begin with your presentation, please. Yes, yeah, so. Um, let me talk about an analysis of um, design related with the soul in in the context of the um, anchor food orthosis devices. So um, we have worked this project with the professors um, Rogelio and Alejandro from UB in Veracruz, right? So the topic is related with uh, the um, uh, fractures about uh, ankles. So we are trying to help uh, in order to design um, orthoses uh, related with the ankle foot, right? So in this sense, the um, the design of this um, orthosis uh, should attend uh, some uh, points that are so important, uh, like comfort and adaptability, uh, the soul profile, uh, which is associated with the gait and security. So we need to use some methods in order to find parameters values uh, uh, which are going to help in order to design a more comfortable device. So really in general today we have um, rigid devices uh, and this is not so natural because uh, provide us uncomfortable working um, and, and also um, we we are interested in, in provide some um, anatomical performance. Um, really, the main contribution, the main contribution of this work, is um, to help in in order to design a more comfortable uh, device, also um, throughout um, a specific soul profile. So in this sense, we are going to present two, two kinematic analysis models in order to find some uh, parameters uh, for helping in the design of this kind of devices. So we attain the main idea related with um, the need to rotate the, the, foot, the foot while we are walking. And so we are, we are going to, to analyze 
the human walking cycle using two main uh, models uh, related with the biped loco locomotion system. So in this sense, we propose two models, one a uh, 40 of if model and another for of uh, eight D of OF model. So this is the first model uh, related with um, four joints for four de degree of freedom uh, values. And we can see that we have four joints and the information related with the upper limb and lower limb. So from this um, model, we are going to analyze uh, the kinematic of these systems using um, a base point in PO, which we can see is here, is in the zero zero, right? So using um, the values of the different angles and also the, the, the parameters related with supporting knee, swing knee, hip and swing foot positions. So we are going to um, do the, our first analysis. So in this sense, uh, we are trying to, to find the distance from the total mass center uh, to the supporting point that in this case is in the stays left. So um, we find that in short words that um, the higher effect of the mass in the support. So the soul, soul has to compensate it with a higher thickness. So we can find we can find in this graphic that the this um, soul profile should has a curve um, design. So uh, from this analysis, we can see one approach of uh, design, but, but um, we should consider that in this case, only we have to work with a geometric approach. So it is so useful if we analyze <laughs> the ground reaction force from the total mass center. So in this case, we are going to work with the acceleration of the associate mass. And from this, we are going to find the components of the force. So um, also considering that the, the foot has uh, 27 length in, in, in centimeters, Finally, we have uh, that the, the maximal force is present where the body is in the vertical position and the lower distance from the center of the mass, like here. So we have another uh, uh, design, which is similar to the last one, but with some um, variant variants. So, uh, we are going to consider the 8, 8, the of model. And in this case, we are working with eight limbs and joint connection points at hip, knees, knees, ankles, and toes. Like we can see here, there are the eight uh, joints. So in, in this sense, we are going to consider the tiptoe fixed and the, the origin of the coordinate systems. And um, also we are going to consider the limb length given by the toes and also the foot length and the lower limb and the, and the tight length. So um, using this model, we are going to analyze that um, we have in this case three um, joint points uh, specifically in, in that tiptoe, like here, the PO, also the, um, the coordinates for the toes here, and finally the ankle. Um, 
and we we can see that uh, here are, here is the uh, red line showing uh, or expressing the, the distance be, between ankle and the tiptoe. So we can imagine that that we when we are walking, this uh, distance is going to change. So finally, uh, we have uh, information um, about this um, event, and we can see that uh, effectively we we have uh, here the um, distance from the ankle to the tiptoe, and um, we can see that considering that the distance from the ankle from uh, from heel is always uh, 11 centimeters uh, from from this analysis we 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 can find that uh, there are another measures like like we can see here so from this um, these three analyses using the kinematic um, performance, uh, considering the human walking locomotion. So we are going to generate a CAD model um, in order to uh, manufacture it in, in another time, in the future time. So, uh, in, in, in some words, uh, this work is related to fix the ankle when, when, when it was fractured. So this kind of device is trying to help us in order to um, use it working in a natural way. So this kind of analysis uh, are in order to find the parameters, the right parameters in order to use, to simulate a natural way, uh, I thought the user is fractured in, in, in the ankle. So our conclusions are um, specifically related with um, the, the detection and a natural relation of the geometry from different dynamical perspective, perspectives in using the the walking model of a, a human user. And also we are um, considering the comfort of the users, of course. And as we can see, uh, a simple mo model approach may be enough in order to, to define um, a soil profile design. So um, this, uh, these uh, kind of studies are part of a more bigger project in order to uh, construct um, this kind of orthesis um, in order to give the possibility of these kind of users in order to uh, do, do her normal life. Also uh, has a uh, fractured um, ankle. So this is um, my my topic and I, I hope that some questions. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Eduardo Vasquez. Uh, I see that only one person uh, is in the the room, right? I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, uh, the participants, uh, remote participants, uh, have uh, a question. No? No questions? Well, I have one question. Uh, Please. Eduardo. Yes. Uh, I think it's very useful to use a uh, Orthesis that permit the, the fix the fracture ankle because uh, I know that uh, <laughs> uh, one uh, 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 thing that we 
we assure is that the uh, uh, the parts or, or the motricity have to, uh, to have to be uh, 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 continuous, right? <laughs> uh, have to be continuous, and if, if you stay, uh, if, if you don't know in a move. Yeah, uh, 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 is 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 not good for me and my <laughs> rehabilitation, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so the so the question is, uh, what is the 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 worst uh, uh, items that you face to manufacture these orthoses? Mm. Oh, I think that, um, well, it is a hard question. Question. Yes. Okay. I, I think there are so much because these kind of things things uh -huh. are related with permissions of the the health centers and also. I suppose. Yes. Yes, and also the materials are so special, but. Um, um we are um returning to this world because it was starting with dr gamboa who who is not uh, okay. more here in, in simstab so the original uh, project uh, was called one and it, it, it was in order to to continue our natural life I thought the the ankle was broken. So um, first, we we think that we should um, uh, we should do this kind of uh, analysis um, using um, simulations with many uh, with many samples using sensors. Uh, sensors related with the distance, with the position, and also with the pressure, right? Pressure, sure. And then, and then, let us to see what is what is going to happen to to happening. But, but uh, our, our experience related with Kamabot, because we are the, the same thing, the, the same team. Uh, we, we know that these kind of projects are not so easy uh, and it is related with the permissions, with the, the regulations, with the kind of materials, etc. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Eduardo. So uh, with these participations, uh, I finish with the session today, tomorrow. We'll continue with Dr. Fernando Scamirosa. Mm -hmm. I thank to um, uh, COVID to, to invite me to, to stay here as a Thanks. session chair. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thanks uh, to you. Thank you very much. See you soon. Yeah, ciao. Goodbye. Thank you for thank the you, support Dr. and attendance. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, uh, Esteban, are you there? Uh, yes, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> <one more. laughs> we, we can stop the record, right? Yeah, right now. Yeah. This is still recording.